This week on On the Road with Mickey, which do we like better, Disney Cruise Line or Royal Caribbean? We're on the road with Mickey, we're gonna have some fun. Regardless of the rain or sun, our trip has just begun. So buckle up, let's go, we're about to start the show. And maybe if you like us, you'll see where else we'll go. Hey everyone, I'm Mike. And she's Sophie. Hi, and she's Brenda. Hi, everyone. And he's Grogu. Hey, buddy boy. <laughs> he is glad you're back. Yes, he is. I'm glad I'm back. I am, too. And we are on the road with Mickey. This is episode 240. Woo! Woo! For October 14th, 2024. And our feature topic is, which do we like better, Disney Cruise Line or Royal Caribbean? Thrown into there will be some recap of our the cruise that Cindy and I took on the Utopia of the Seas and what we thought of that. But also, um, we're just going to do a little comparison and see which one we like better in the end. So stay tuned. Now, normally we would have cheddar for the big cheese, but um, we have skipped cheddar this week because I wanted to make an announcement about um, about Hurricane Milton. And as we are recording, Hurricane Milton has um, passed through the state of Florida and has slammed it from west to east. Um, leaving a lot of destruction behind, a lot of water, a lot of issues. Um, and because of that, the cheddar just doesn't mean as much. So um, as a result, we here at On the Road with Mickey would like to pass along to everyone hearing that we are praying for all of you. We have all experienced storms like this before, and our prayer is for God to surround all of you with his protection now and in the aftermath and mm -hmm. like i said the hurricane has passed through the state is back over into the atlantic ocean um there's still some lingering rains coming but um one of the positives that i've been seeing on facebook is that there has been um a lot of people reporting in that they are doing just fine and yeah. that they some of them didn't even lose power. Some did. Some flooding. Some not. Um, I know Tropicana Field in Tampa had the roof. Um, and that's where first responders were being housed and so forth for relief. But um, but as far as it looks, as far as what I've been hearing so far, things have been a lot better than... Um, we were we were worried that it would be so yes, we were anticipating so, horrible horrible yeah. destruction and we just we've been praying yeah. our heads off yeah so i am i'm glad that my friends and family and everyone down there so far seems to be doing okay um you know property can be replaced lives can't so so that's where we're at so mm -hmm. that is our cheddar for today Yes. All right. Well, as you all know, you can reach us on our Instagram, our Facebook group, our Facebook page, our um, website on the road with Mickey.com. You can email us at info at on the road with Mickey.com and you can connect with us. You can leave a comment on our YouTube channel. So there are a lot of ways to reach out to Brenda, Sophie, and myself. And so um, we hope you do. But first, though, I think we should move on into our feature topic. Mm -hmm. I think we should, too, because yeah. I am curious to hear what you have to say. Okay. Well, we, um, we are going to try to answer the question... Which do we like better, Disney Cruise Line or Royal Caribbean? So 
Brenda has a lot more cruising experience than I do. That that's for sure. Um, as for me, um, as for me, I've been on two cruises: the Disney Dream, January thirtieth through February fourth, and um, the Utopia of the Seas, October fourth through October seventh this year. Um, and I I enjoyed both of them. Okay. That's Brenda's, a good thing. Mm-hmm. Brenda's been on 800 cruises. <laughs> that many. And I have been on a big fat zero. <laughs> well, okay. 700 oh, cruises. You have plenty of time, girl. Yeah, I know. Anyway, Brenda, what was your last cruise? My last one was the Disney Magic from Galveston, January 2024. Okay. Mm-hmm. I tend to go on a lot from Galveston since it's right there. You just In drive down there. And park free, yeah. So I tend to go on a lot of those, but it's fun. It is fun. Um, you know, I guess... How should I do this, ladies? Should I give a little recap on what yeah. you thought of Utopia? Yeah. You can, yeah, about, yeah, like what there is to do, what you thought about the food, what you mm-hmm. thought about the activities, the, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Well, um, boarding was super easy. We left thing. out of Port Canaveral, and boarding was super easy. We had done the um the videos for the safety for the muster check and everything like that Mm -hmm. um on our app they have a royal caribbean app that we were able to do those videos and uh, we had answered we had done our check-in early and we had also answered our health questions let's stop there for just a second because that particular process on royal is much easier than on disney it is um on royal the um check-in process we did um we did that the first two steps beforehand and then the health questionnaire you have to answer when you're one day before your cruise so we did that on october 3rd and um for that perspective it was two questions The first question was, are you going to be 24 weeks pregnant when you sail? And for me, that answer was no. And for Cindy, (laughs) that answer was no. Good. (laughs) And then the other question is, are you having any symptoms? Are you having fever? Are you having chills? Are you doing this? Are you, you know, all the little medical questions that make them say, hey, are you are you sick already getting onto a ship with a test bunch tube. of people? Yeah. Are you a test tube? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer was also no. It was two questions. And once that was done, they updated our our boarding pass. You have a boarding pass just like getting on a plane. And they updated our boarding pass. And Cindy and I were given express boarding. And what that means is um, we went down this line at Port Canaveral on the left and we met with a guy um, who checked us in, who scanned our, who took a picture of our passports um, with his iPad and, um, and basically scanned our boarding pass information. And when he did that, they gave us a sticker that we put on and when we got to the ship, we didn't have to go through any additional check-in stuff. They saw that we had already done that, and we were done. And so for us, it was – I felt like it was like, you know, apples and oranges. I think, they, you know, taking care of it ahead of the fact meant I didn't have to take care of the same process afterwards. So I guess it was faster. Um, to me, uh, well, when I was on it, I there are I when I was on Royal Caribbean, we still had to go to our muster station so they could check our name off. Right. So we had to go go to it physically. They checked our name off. 
But on the Disney ship, they actually make you, everybody comes outside, everybody stands in line at their muster station until everybody's accounted for. It's, a, it's to me, it's, I mean, the process on Royal is so much easier. It doesn't waste your time. You can do whatever you want. You just have to check in at that muster station so that you yeah. know where to go should you have to. Right, that right. And that, and that, that's absolutely right. Because we did the videos and the last right. step for musters, we still had to go there so that we knew where we were going. And, and they did that. And they, they just scanned our, our CPAS card. Yeah, um, it's so much easier. So two things on that though um one is we did it and we were done and that was really really convenient you're right because it was super easy to do and we were there and done um but the second thing is that they kept announcing over and over and over again for the people who hadn't done it that's true and so I feel like it might have delayed us leaving. Oh, really? Y'all left late? We we did. Now, oh. there were two things that happened. I think it was partly because of the people who hadn't gone to the muster stations to check in. I also feel like um, right before we were about to leave, there was an announcement. And um, over the intercom, this... Um, this crew member was saying alpha 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 and and said medical team or something to stateroom deck nine stateroom 9170 and they went through that like three different times so i feel like someone had some sort of medical issue yeah and that was and that was before we ever left port well thankfully thankfully you know because they have to turn around and come back sometimes when that happens, when they're if it, yeah. they're thirty minutes or an hour out, and they have to turn around. So I don't know any. Obviously, I don't know any details on that. I'm not, um, I'm not in, in the know on that. So I don't know if they were able to treat them and they were fine, or if they had to evacuate or or what. But um, but I think that also delayed us a little bit from leaving. Yeah. So, Probably. but but um, it delayed us to the point that I saw. We saw from our stateroom, we were on deck six, um, stateroom 6138, and um, we were on the port side, and we were very aft. We were There were only like five cabins to the end of the ship, and it didn't affect us at all. It was really nice room. It was very nice room. Um, and we had a balcony and we saw leaving in front of us the Disney wish. Aha. And it was really cool. And that thing was going by and I'm like, bye bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it played the when you wish upon a star on yeah. the horn. And it was it was fabulous. <laughs> wow. Yes. It was really That's cool. That's one stuff. thing Royal doesn't play on their horn. Mm-hmm. No, they sure don't. <laughs> but but so it was really still cool. got a taste of Disney, even though you weren't on a Disney exactly, ship. Exactly, exactly. Um, so our first meal. This is so funny because okay, stateroom six one three eight is on deck six. It is right behind Playmakers Bar, which is in the boardwalk area on Utopia the Seas, and the boardwalk area also has the hot dog shop. And Cindy and I had hot dogs for our first meal nice. before we left, and they were open, and it's all complimentary. Um, so I had a Polish sausage hot dog that was really yummy, and she had a regular hot dog with um, slaw and ketchup and mustard. They didn't have chili, so so she enjoyed that, and Yay. it was really good. And that was right by. The carousel, which is also in the boardwalk area. Yeah, that's sweet. So, and we rode the carousel. Oh, sweet. So it was, it was a lot of fun, but, um, but anyway, so, um, it was a short cruise. We left on Friday, 
Saturday we were in Nassau. Sunday we were in Coco Cay, and Monday we were back at Port. It was like wow. done. Yeah. It was it was really Those three go, nights go, go. are quick, yeah. They are very quick. How long were you on the Disney cruise? It was a four night. So a four night. we had one we had one day at sea, which I missed not having on this one. Yeah, mm. yeah. You get to enjoy the ship more. Utopia also has a four night sailing. So the the three night sailings are Friday, Saturday, Sunday, get back in Monday. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, get back Friday. It's the four night sailing. And that has a day at sea. Yeah. And I like okay. having a day at sea. It just feels relaxed. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's neat to just watch the sea go by. Yeah. yeah. And with this nice to relax. You didn't you don't feel like you have as much time. Even though we didn't get off the ship at Nassau because we'd been to Nassau. Yeah. Um, so we used that day to explore the ship and to see some stuff. And that was really neat. Um, mm-hmm. That's but we good. did get off and go to the beach at Coco Cay. And we had yeah, a heck yeah. time. We went to um, Chill Island, which is the family beach that is um, complimentary. We did not pay for um, Hideaway Beach, which is the adult only. And we didn't need to. Um the island, Chill Island, has a lot of um, chairs and stuff for you to just relax. And so there were a lot of people there, but it didn't feel like there were a ton of people. I think a lot of people went to Thrill Island right there over my shoulder, which is the water park that you pay for. And I think a lot of people went there. And, of course, I think some went to Hideaway Beach and some went to the pool that there's a pool on the island on Coco Cay. And um and I think a lot of people went there. So so we didn't have we didn't feel like we were super cramped. Um you know what? I I wasn't prepared. I wasn't going to do this, but let me pull up a picture because I wanted you to see um here it is. I want to share this picture. Because we had um, another ship docked next to us when we were um, when we were on on Coco Cay, and it was the Independence of the Sea, and there it is. Wow, there it is. And you know, when you look at the two. From this angle, they look similar. Um, the the bow of the ship down by the waterline, to me, uh, Utopia is just a little bit bigger on the bow. But then mm-hmm. as you go up, you see that they built the Utopia out. Yeah, so, a lot out. A lot out. <laughs> yeah. So that's where the real size comes in. Utopia is, is um, Huge. the second largest ship in the world. Icon of the Seas, which is Royal Caribbean also, is the largest. This is the Independence of the Seas. We met a lady who was sitting just a couple seats down from us, and uh, she was on the Independence. And they were, they left out of Miami, and they just left yesterday. This was their first day. Mm-hmm. And they were doing Western Caribbean, so they were going down to Mexico and so forth. Yeah. So, um but we had a real good talk with her. It was it was fun to talk itineraries and see what they were doing and what they were looking forward to. So it was kind of neat. Um, so which it, did you prefer, Perfect Day at Coco Cay or Castaway Key? Like of the islands, the Disney Island uh, versus the Royal Car- Caribbean Island, which did you prefer? For what I do, I like Castaway Key better. Which is R and R. R and R. I like that I could take at Castaway Key. I could take the tram to the adult beach and just park it and know that I got a nice relaxing time with adults and I don't have to worry about kids everywhere. And you um, don't have to pay extra for it. And you don't have to pay extra. 
Um, what about food? Did you eat food at Perfect Day? Because I know you probably went mm-hmm. to Cookies over there at Castaway, I'm guessing, if you ate at we cookies. ate at Cookies too, uh-huh. on Castaway, and we ate um, at the pavilion that had the food at Coco K. Um, we had, um, I had a, a burger, a cheeseburger. It was really good, and I had some um, fries. And no, I didn't have fries. I had corn on the cob, roasted corn on the cob. And um, and it was good. And I just had water to drink because I needed my water. So what did you have at cookies? Cookies. I probably had similar things, but I don't remember exactly. Um, I know I had some cookies at cookies. <laughs> and ice cream, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I did have an ice cream cone at, at Castaway Key. I mean, at, um, at Coco K. And I will tell you, the ice cream on Disney is better than the ice cream on World Caribbean on oh, the well, islands. There you go. There's the decision right there. <laughs> <laughs> the ice cream on Royal is more like an ice milk. It's similar to what you get at Jason's Deli. So if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's not bad. It's just not. I get you. It's not creamy. I mean, it's not as creamy. <laughs> Um, nah. And I had a swirl cone, and it was good, but I didn't eat it's the whole thing. Soft serve. It's soft serve. It's soft yeah. serve is what it is. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm gonna I, say it: traditional ice cream is better than soft serve. Well, it's soft serve on on Castaway Key too. Mm. So you you don't you got both of those are are soft serve, but one has more cream in it than the other. Um, I did have. At Sprinkles on the ship, I did have an ice cream cone that was also soft serve, Sophie, and I had swirl, and that was better than it was on the island. It was creamier. It was more like real soft serve ice cream. Um, so it was good. So that that one was good. Um, okay. Um, we ran into some pixies. We went on where there were eight pixies that went. We had uh, we had Lisa and her daughter Amber. We had Elaine and her husband Ricky, and we had Anna and her husband Mike. So two Mikes, awesome. <laughs> we had Taylor and her husband Justin, and we had um, we had Dana who was traveling solo, and we had let's see here, we had Cheryl. And her husband Dave and their daughter Kimmy. Um, so there were seven or eight of us, and I'm trying to hope I don't forget. Did Debbie Matulo go on that one? Oh yeah, Debbie Matulo. We had Debbie and I think she took her, her daughter, daughter, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so there were eight of us, and thank you for remembering. Um, and we had a really good time because what we did is we kind of grouped all of our dining together. And we ate at five o'clock and we had um, tables right with each other. And we would just we would just sit in in one spot. And then the next night we'd move around and sit somewhere else and move around. And, you know, it was really cool. So so it just worked out really nicely. How did you like the dining compared to Disney? And I'm talking about food. I'm talking about what happens during the dining reservation or during the dining, actually, Um, all that. What? did you think about the dining on Disney versus the dining on Royal? So um, on Royal, the food was good. And I enjoyed the first night I had prime rib Mm -hmm. and it was really good. And the second night I had tiger shrimp and it was okay. It was, it was edible and it was good, but it wasn't (sighs) like, I I would eat that every single day. It wasn't that kind of meal. And then the third night, though, I had a lamb shank that was absolutely phenomenal. And I might it, it's a, it's hard because I love prime rib, but I almost feel like I like the lamb shank better, which is really hard. It it was you know how lamb can sometimes be a little gamey. This was not gamey. It was that's a good thing. It was. I didn't need my knife. I would just, I would just use my fork to, to get it right off the bone. 
and nice. and it felt like a really really good bone in uh, pot roast is kind of how it tasted and even cindy tried a little bit of it and she doesn't like lamb and she wouldn't order it necessarily but she but the taste she had she liked that's good do you um, remember what you had on the disney cruise i had the prime rib and i had a steak once and i don't remember the other nights now i will tell you um we had um really good servers um for disney and we had really good servers for royal that's good um on, i don't remember the names on disney but cindy does um and and that was really awesome that she remembers that but on royal we had godwin who was our assistant server and we had maria who was our server and they were both very very nice godwin was from india and maria was from the ukraine and we actually got to know them very well and um i have i have my friday morning fellowship brothers in christ shirt on for the taping and um on friday morning fellowship we have people that zoom in for our encouragement group that meets on that friday morning that are from all over the world and we have a pastor who joins us from india and we have a pastor who joins us from the ukraine and so um it was really neat to make that connection because we talked about that i talked about that with both of them and it was really neat uh, maria's family is still in the ukraine they are on the western side of ukraine so they are further away from the where the war is going on thankfully yeah yeah so they are safer um and she misses them and she she chats with them on whatsapp and um and but they are safe and so i was telling her about sasha who's one of my brothers who joins us from the ukraine who is who is in near the war zone you know and he joins in as he can um and then godwin is from india he's from a northern area of india and my friend sam is from chennai india and which is further south and it's just really neat and to have that that connection of people that i only know through my encouragement group you know yeah so it's really it's neat. a small world after all yes it is <laughs> um, so so as far as the servers went both of our experiences were really good with the servers and that's good and 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 our stateroom attendance and everything everything was top notch the the you know part of what makes a good good cruise is the staff that's if you sure. have great service then it's going to be a much better experience than if you don't and and they they were really good um now as far as the environment goes the royal environment for utopia um during dining and also when it's not dining is much more party style they were announcing um they were they were dancing in the in the aisleways they were swirling their napkins they were um they were singing songs and and it was much more a party atmosphere at the dining hall than it was on disney disney was much more in my opinion much more um elegant not not as you know easy to just jump off and start dancing around it was much more of a formal environment than it was on royal um and that's but that's what utopia is utopia of the seas is billed as the world's greatest weekend yeah party on the weekend yep uh -huh. yep and that's and i'm telling you that's what it was um that there were you know i'll get back to that in just a little bit but um but there let's talk about the shows for mm -hmm. a moment. Okay. because 
we saw the first night we saw the Utopia um, ice show that was absolutely incredible. The second night we saw, um, did we see all in the second night or did we see Aqua 82? We saw all three of them. I don't remember which one we saw when, but actually we saw the the second and third, the second night or third night, we saw both. (laughs) Oh, awesome. So it was the third night when we saw both. We saw all in at 9.15 and it was over at 10 or it was 9.30. It was over at 10.15 and then we hoofed it from the aft of the ship, Sophie, from the back of the ship. Oh, goodness. All the way to the forward, or no, from the forward to the aft, all the way to the back of the ship to get to the seating for the Aqua 82, which is a, the swimming show where they do dives. Goodness gracious, Daddy. That reminds me of the time I walked from one end of Baltimore Airport to the other. <laughs> yes, it was like that. And oh, we we walked through the smoking side of the casino. Fortunately, oh. it was not smoking, but that was the only way we could do it because there were 500 people all trying to get on an elevator yeah. right oh. outside the theater. So we cut through there and it was fine. It was not smoky. Okay. It, we didn't smell smoke. Um, and we made it to through there and then we had other elevators that we were able to get to because we had to go up we went from deck four to deck six um so we had to go up two decks and so that's what we did and we made it there and we got there and we were able to sit down at 10 28 for a 10 30 show <laughs> wow and Brad at night at night at 10 30 at night and it's a 45 minute show Oh, goodness, Daddy. And after that, Mommy and I went to bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what did but you think of the shows? I, I loved them. I, I really loved... Um, it, it's a toss-up for me between Aqua 82 and Utopia Ice Show mm-hmm. as to which one I like better. I, and compared I to like, Disney shows, what did you think? They are much more music-driven much more energetic um they to me they don't compare as far as what you get on a disney cruise it, it just disney doesn't. cruise is like a broadway show it's, it's a broadway just, show. Yeah. 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 show that's exactly it and that's but why it's a whole different vibe. so it is entirely different and and it's it's meant to be that way i don't think they're trying to compete with disney on their shows no definitely not. No. um because they're very I, unique they are very unique. Um, the All In show was a bunch of 80 songs. Um, that one, eh, that one I could take. I don't need to see it again. Gotcha. You know, but it was kind of cool because they also had a drone show in the middle of the show. Mm, right? Cool. The theater, in the Royal Theater. Um, it was, so that was really kind of cool. But but the songs and it was so loud in there it was it wasn't music that i knew very much of i knew maybe three songs they played um some gloria estefan and miami sound machine songs that i knew um but a lot of it i had no idea it was just the music you know um and then but the ice show the ice show was really cool and some of the moves that they made on the on the ice were like they were like we were watching a performance of you know like when they're at the doing the competitions in the olympics or whatever you know the the jumps and everything but they also had ozo who was the only guy on the ice without skates he was in regular shoes and he was a um like a stunt guy and he would climb up and they they p- kept handing him chairs on a table which was on the ice and he would climb himself up on these chairs and place them and then get another one and place it. Oh, thank you. 
And when he was done, Brenda and Sophie, he was higher than the lights that are up in the ceiling. Dang. Oh, my goodness. It was so, he was so good. It was phenomenal. They had a guy just like him on the, on the allure. Yeah. And, um, and they, you know, I don't know. And when they, when they finished the show, um, everyone bowed, of course, and everything like that. And they said, and our special guest, Ozo. And, wow. And he was the only one named. <laughs> nice. Wow. Everyone else. That is was such part a gift. The show. It, what cracks was... me up is that no matter how much the ship is rocking, they, they do that ice like it's, like it's flat. I, I, I have no yeah. idea how they like compensate for, yeah. I don't know, but it's magic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Brenda had mentioned in the last episode that um, that you gotta you gotta watch it and see because sometimes they cancel the show if the, the ship show. is rocking too much yeah. on the Aqua show. And um, when we started it at ten thirty on the last night, um, it wasn't rocking a whole lot, but you could see. It rocking near the end of the show And they kept going and they finished the show And everything was fine That's good. But I found myself seeing What Brenda was talking about With the waves going like this Yeah And you could see the water And the level dropping Probably like two or three feet on one right. end Right and, yeah. um, and Sophie they were diving from 30 feet up maybe yeah, I mean, I'm glad they got to finish the show though. So you it get was, to see the whole that thing. That is a little bit concerning. Yeah. Well, they know what they're doing and they yeah. know how yeah, deep I'm it sure. is and all that. And, you know, I I don't know. Maybe maybe they adjusted some of their dives because some of the dives at the end, they were um feet first, you know, mm. as they entered the water, which I'm thinking you know, normally you would go head first, but if you're worried about the level, go feet first because then you're because not because better head. to break your legs than your exactly. skull. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I but I don't think would've... it was. I don't think yeah. it was the level like they would have had that kind of issue. I don't think that would have been the the case. That's but, right. Okay. Um, it would have allowed them to be able to spring back up. You know, with their feet if they needed to, but okay. but it was really good. It was really good and. And I'm glad we saw all of them. And like I said, my, it's a toss up for me between the um, Utopia and the Aqua 82 as to which one I like better. So it was really cool. Um, you know, one thing that's different um, with Disney and Royal, and I think this is something Royal can improve on, is that um, is that when we went to Utopia, which was the first night, they had a they had a, a station set up where you could buy popcorn and drinks, and we did. We bought a couple things of popcorn and a diet coke we shared, and um, and it was just this little dinky popcorn cart <laughs> that they roll around, and I was thinking to myself, they need to improve that because Disney has like this whole concession stand that's built into this ship right there, and yeah. and it's always there. And it's they need to improve that because it looked like an afterthought. So to me, I think they need to improve on that. But but anyway, it was still good popcorn and it was still a good drink and um and we enjoyed it with the ice show. So Did you have a movie theater? Did they you go? I didn't go. Okay. Um, I don't know if they do or not. I don't remember seeing it. That's one of the activities we love on the hmm. Disney ships. That and trivia, which I actually know the answers to, as opposed to the trivia on World Caribbean, which I know no answer to. Well, we did two <laughs> trivia shows. We did. We finished breakfast on day two, and we went down to. Um, they were both at the karaoke place, which is in the Royal Promenade, which is where you get on the ship, Sophie. Mm-hmm. And um, the karaoke place that morning had Dingbat's Trivia. And it was like they gave you a sheet of paper and you and it had like clues. OK, here's one clue. There's a word and it says H.O. 
R O B O D. Okay. And you got to figure out what it means. And I would have no clue unless I knew the answer, which I do because others had told me. So H O R O B O D. D. Cool. Yeah, see what how much different it is in the Disney trivia? <laughs> you got any idea, girls? No. no. Okay. So the answer is Robin Hood. Rob in Hood. Because Rob is in the word Hood. H O O D. Robin no. Hood. No. <laughs> and that's, you know what? That I is was the much same different way. than Disney trivia. I do. I See, knew none I of them. I feel like <laughs> if I had seen it on the screen, because I'm sure that the R O B was probably spaced out from between the H O and the O D. It wasn't. It was all as no? if it was one word. That's They didn't weird. want to make it too easy. But these people know their trivia. Lisa and Dana and them. They know their trivia. I was like, Goodness, no. I have no they idea. Know the Disney trivia. No way. No way. They had to have seen that before and remembered the answer. There's no way. Dana, this was Dana's third time on the Utopia. First time with Pixies. But she said specifically that the sheets when she went last time are different this time. So it's different sheets. Hmm. So they just they I don't know how they know, but they but they figure it out or they Googled it or something. I don't know. But anyway, I was horrible about that one. But then um on another night, was it that same night, maybe? I don't remember. They had Harry Potter trivia. And that was really cool, Brenda. Sophie knows cool. all about it because yeah. I already told her about that part. Um, and they started by playing uh, a parody song of Voldemort <laughs> done by <laughs> Bruno Mars. It was oh. so funny, and it's on YouTube. And Brenda can, Sophie can send it to you, Brenda, if you want to watch it. It's hysterically funny. funny. Okay. And and then they asked all these questions, and I think because Cindy and I had been at the movies. We knew almost every. Oh yeah, one you had just seen the series. That's cool. So <laughs> we had we we did not win. We had thirty one points out of thirty five. The winner had thirty four out of thirty five. Still cool though. It's still really cool. It was a lot of fun, and and what makes it fun is the people who run the who run it. You know, um, they are so energetic. And they they bring such energy to the fun and make it just a lot of fun. The lady that was doing the Harry Potter trivia was from Britain. And when we went to go to, it was the third night. It was the same night we went to the show to see the All In. She had come over to work as, to help out with that production. And we saw her and I yelled out to her. I'm like, hey, Harry Potter lady. And she's <laughs> like, <"Hey." laughs> and, and it was just fun, you know? Yeah. It was really fun. So that sounds fun. So we had a good time. You know, there it was there were a lot of things we liked. There were some things we didn't like as much. We liked the boardwalk area. We liked um we liked the Royal Promenade, had some really cool stuff there. We um, sat and met for a couple times at Schooner's Bar, and um, and we also went to various things. We went to the Solarium, which is the adult-only section, and mm -hmm. it was very peaceful for the most part. Um, but it is, like I said, it's intended to be the world's greatest weekend, so there was a lot of partying going on. There was a lot of alcohol everywhere. Um, you had to be really careful. And there were a lot of little kids on the boat, and I don't feel like it. It's my opinion only, but I don't feel like it should have been a cruise for little kids. No. It. it I, Do you there, know if there was a kids' place for them to go? Like I yeah, know there the, are. there's kids' clubs. Okay. There are, there are several. Um, 
there's they're all age specific they have mm-hmm. some for 13 to 17 some for the tweenies and some for the younger ones um i don't know how much they they used them you know because i don't have anyone mm-hmm. at range but um but it just to me they're you had to be real careful because you know people would would drink whatever they were drinking and then leave the glass on the table and if you get some kid who's walking by and their parents are paying they might drink whatever's left you know so you gotta be careful you don't know i didn't see that happen i'm just thinking yeah the the, the kids were around like easily accessible alcohol that i understand what you're saying yeah Yeah. hopefully they didn't do that but yeah did you go to central park we did go to Central Park. That's it, beautiful. It is beautiful and it's really nice. But we went during the day and I actually did my Bible study there. Yeah. Um, but it was quiet. it was really loud though. Oh really? Because when I was the on day, the Allure, it was quiet. But during mm-hmm. the day it was really loud because they had um like a DJ and some something going on up higher because you could, you know, Central Park is on deck eight. On Utopia and up on deck 16 is the pool decks and, and 15 is 16 and um and it's open from there down into Central Park and they even um they even shouted down through their audio to the people in Central Park who started applauding you know um and and you can hear their music and their whatever they were doing there um and it was really yeah. loud I would have preferred um, was, the quiet Central yeah. Park if they could have somehow separated the loud from the peaceful serenity. Yeah, and um, and that and it was fine. Um, it was loud, and I was still able to do my work, um, and and that was fine. And it's really beautiful there. The, yeah. the flowers and the the shrubs and everything they grow there are just incredible. It is beautiful, um, and yeah. and so. So it was loud though during the day, and and you know what we've what I've learned, and you correct me if you think I'm wrong, but what it feels like is on a sh- on a cruise like that one, where it's a compressed time, and you have just a short weekend, I feel like you get a different clientele and a different vibe than you do if you have like a longer royal cruise. I think, yeah. I think, um, if they ever, once this wears off a bit and they make Utopia maybe have seven night sailings, I think there will be a different environment, and I think it'll be uh, stages where it's a lot more relaxed and not as loud and party like as it was for this one. I'm not sure know. that's their goal. I think I their goal is to be a party ship compared to. You know, a fun. I should. I shouldn't say party ship. I think it's that fun is their whole. It's like if Disney's focus is family, I think Royals' focus is more fun, like loud fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> I mean, I think Disney cruises are a lot of fun, but they're not wild and crazy. Right. Twenty four seven. Right. And that's, and you're, you're absolutely right. And Dave, Cheryl's husband, he gave me permission to, to use this as long as I sent him the royalties. Um, <laughs> he Good said, luck, <laughs> he said um, that Disney Cruise is obviously to Disney, the parks, you know, and he said that to, in his opinion, Royal is, more like the universal vibe. I can understand you know, that. Where understand where you get a lot of teenagers and so forth, and it's a lot more fun parade and you know dancing and everything like that, and more loud music and stuff like that, and not so much when you wish upon a star. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know. And so I. And I, so you have to choose based on your taste. Yeah, you do. Um, but it was a lot of fun to go on it and we did have a good time. It was, we had a lot of fun and we had a really good time and seeing the pixies that were able to go and that went, 
um, was really a lot of fun, and that made that even more more special. Um, but the and, question of today's episode still has to be answered. Yeah, and you know, for me, it's Disney all the way. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I think for Disney people or what we call Disney people, which we're part of, don't mm -hmm. like we're part Absolutely. of. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that Disney people will always feel like no matter what Disney destination they're they're at, that is home. It's an extension of us. Like it's oh, weird, yeah. but that's for sure. It's a culture, is what it is. Yeah. It's like a culture. And Disney, there is something very specific about Disney that you don't find anywhere else except on a Disney property of some sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like so, there are it's a community. around It's like every the people are your one. community. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did mention the casino. Um, they what had two. So they have the smoking casino, which is about Five times the size of the non-smoking casino. <laughs> Probably to make sure that it doesn't smell overly nicotine-y. Uh, well, I don't know if that's I it. think because a lot of people go to their casino and they like to smoke. And yeah. Anyway. Um, we walked into the non-smoking casino, Cindy and I, and we saw all this equipment and all these machines. And I was like... What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> I had never been to a casino. I couldn't figure out how do I how do I get money to pay for it, you know, to and play mommy the game. who's been to Las Vegas said sit down and watch. No, actually no. We didn't know because you know, in Vegas you put in coins or whatever and you yeah. and you play your games. And put here it it's somehow <laughs> somehow it's tied to your room key and whatnot. So we walked in and we looked around for about three minutes and we walked right back out and we never played. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot different now. And especially after COVID, everything is like, don't touch the money. Don't touch anything. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So I did not win a hundred grand. Dang um, it. I, didn't <laughs> I was lose waiting for my anything. 50 to show up. I didn't <sighs> lose any. And. Um, well, now how am I supposed to pay for my overly elaborate and opulent wedding daddy i don't know we'll figure it out baby but um and there's not one yet anyway because there's no, no proposal yet either i was so. wondering if there's something i've been missing no, no i would have told you um he's waiting until i have the money for it oh well anyway that's another topic <laughs> for another timing. day all in God's and timing. God's timing. And so the funny thing is, <laughs> I told everyone we're going on the cheap, right? Um, we paid what we paid for the for the fare and everything like that, the gratuities and the t and the insurance, that all we paid before the cruise. And we had fifty dollars on board credit when we went to the um ice show. We bought the two popcorns and a Diet Coke, and it was $6.30, and that came off of the $50 onboard credit. Mm -hmm. And then on the last day, um, after we got back from Coco K, we went into um, the sugar, the sugar something, sugar eats something, sugar beach or something like that. It's a candy store. Oh yeah, Sugar Beach. You showed me a photo of it. It's right yeah. outside the carousel. Uh -huh. It looks when we so bought, cool. We bought a bunch of candy so we wouldn't be buying a bunch of candy at the airport. <laughs> and that was like $19 or something. And when we were done and left, we didn't we didn't see anything else we wanted to buy. So, um when we left, we gave we ended up giving Royal back $24 of that $50 onboard credit. <laughs> oh, wow. So we did play. We were going to play one game of Ski Ball. Cindy wanted to play it. And it was $2.50. And the machine 
malfunctioned and it didn't work. Oh. So someone got on the horn and they credited us back our 250. And so, but we actually, so when I say we went on the cheap, we didn't, after we paid our stuff at the beginning, you know, we didn't, we didn't pay another penny in, on the ship. And, and all of that we paid was out of that onboard credit. <laughs> so wow. no $25 souvenir for Sophie. I didn't see anything. We didn't see anything that we thought she would like. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, it's what like did on a Disney ship, see? there would have been a lot of stuff probably that she would have liked. But when you're trying to. I mean, you know. they the clothing and stuff like that. But just like, you know, a sweatshirt that says Utopia or whatever. And it, and it just didn't seem like you. You're right. Yeah. So. You could have gotten me a giant $25 bag of candy and I would have been happy. <laughs> that would have been yeah. a huge bag. It would have been. It was like going into Popalops when it was at the mall. I so. loved Popalops. Popalops was this really awesome candy store that was that's in the mall closest to our house, and it was all sorts of bright neon colors. There was purple, green, pink, orange, and the mascot was this caterpillar that was made out of like gumballs or something and his Dude. name was Popalop. Yeah. That's it's cute. not there anymore, but they Such would have you know the the canisters. Yeah, they would have the canisters of all the different candies that you they could had, get. They had gummy bears, the world's largest gummy bears on a stick and it was like Oh my gosh. It yeah. was huge. Anyway, I never got so, one. No, we didn't get one there. We would get some other stuff that was more reasonable. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so that's that's Utopia. Well, um, thank you for sharing it. What when we were leaving, um, we woke up at we set our alarm at six, I think, and we got up. Our time to leave with luggage was 8.20, but we were doing self. And um, so we just, they call it self-assist, where you carry your luggage out on your own. Right. And so, hang on, I got a cough. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, um, good. We had to, we went up, we left our stateroom and our stuff in our stateroom. We went up for breakfast. Windjammers is a really good place to eat mm. on the 15th deck, and they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we had um, breakfast and lunch there most days, um, and we had breakfast there, and then we came back, and we just gathered our stuff and and got off the ship, and it was really easy. It was really simple, so, so that part... You didn't part, forget anything in your room, right? No. Oh. Good. Nothing. So that's great. Well, I'm glad y'all had fun. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So that's that's my answer. What's your answer, ladies? Same. I don't know. I think you do know, Sophie. <laughs> I think I probably will prefer Disney, but again, I don't know for certain because I've never been on either. True. Um, we, the next cruise that I'm planning for us will be the one when Sophie goes. Yes. And Where are we going? that will be a Disney cruise. Yay. So, What's the itinerary? I don't know yet, but I think it'll be a Caribbean itinerary. Okay. And, nice. And we'll see. We got to start planning that because we got to start paying for that. Um. But it'll, I think it'll be a Disney, and I think it'll be a Caribbean. Will you so. go to Nassau with me if that's where we stop? Um, I would, except that Caribbean itineraries are different and don't go to Nassau because oh. Nassau is a Bahamian itinerary. Oh. Bah Bahamian itineraries are shorter because it's not as far out. Okay. There's a lot so. of other great places, though, on a Caribbean cruise. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So, so if we do a Bahamian cruise and we go to Nassau, then absolutely we'll get it off with you. Thank you. 
So I want to try the rum cake factory that you guys don't like. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was nasty, Sophie. <laughs> anyway, not a fan either over here. Uh-uh. <laughs> it was too strong. Yeah, I do not like rum. Ugh. I like just our rum. opinion, just our opinion. <laughs> yeah. I like rum. You like rum because it was in your pina colava. And that was <laughs> and the it wasn't best the drink rum I've that ever you had. Yeah, it wasn't the rum you taste as much. It was the everything else. The yeah, rum was true. just as a little bit of it. Came whereas you know, it, yeah, a little bit. And for this, imagine having a piece of pound cake, which you love and I love. And just dipping it in a bottle of rum and then eating it. It just is soaking that's kinda, it in it. That's kind of like what it is. And so it is super strong. It's very strong. Well, but I will never anyway. know until I try it. That's right. You're right. So You're right. anyway, so that is that our feature topic then? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Well, I talked the whole episode. Yes, you did. Thank Almost. you. Verdict unanimously, Disney. (laughs) There you go. There you go, Sophie. You heard it here first. (laughs) All right, Sophie. It is time for this day in Disney history for October 14th. And I lucked out because I found something slightly related to cruise lines. (laughs) Yay. Cool. But not really. Okay. The year is 1971. Many, many years before Disney will even dip its toes into the cruise line business. That's true. Walt, Walt Disney World's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea attraction opens at the 14 day old Magic Kingdom. It features 12 38 passenger, 39 including the operator, submarines in an 11.5 million gallon tank of water. A very close cousin to Disneyland's submarine voyage, which opened in 1959, the two rides share many of the same elements and animatronics. Nice. Nice. And that. Thank you, Sophie. That is awesome. That Thank you, Sophie. That was a big deal 20,000 leagues that oh, was yeah that was an e ticket attraction and e was the highest one that was yep. the most expensive attraction luckily for us even though it's not in magic kingdom anymore there is still a 20,000 leagues under the sea attraction in tokyo disney sea yeah well, okay that's what i have well, good one, Sophie. It's now time to stump the sofa. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> good luck. You know what? This is a movie I've never seen. Oh. Mm. The characters I know, but I've never seen the movie. And I'm wondering if Sophie will know it because it's more obscure. Probably. Okay. So. The first character is Dr. Doppler. Hmm. I feel I feel like I have a sixth sense, a spidey sense is tingling. I'm going to go out on a limb and say treasure planet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> what about John Silver. Definitely Treasure Planet. <laughs> what about Jim Hawkins? Definitely, definitely Treasure Planet. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I've never oh, seen that movie either, Daddy. That is amazing. Oh my gosh! One clue. <laughs> One clue from me, she's never seen. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. See? My my girl is a genius, Brenda. I know that's right. Thank you for teaching me most of what I know, Daddy. I, I don't I didn't teach you any of this. I don't have that. 
The only one that I would have known to give away for me was Jim Hawkins. For me, it was John Silver, because he's the villain, the twist villain. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. I have no words. Great job, Sophie. <laughs> Never saw That's it. That's all the words we need. Great <laughs> job. Thank you. Wow. Wow is the word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's the word, it's the word. Yeah. <laughs> you say it's the word. Wow, That's, it's the word. That is amazing. <laughs> well, that I was almost good. said Atlantis the Lost Empire, but then I remembered we'd done that already. Yeah. Well, sometimes I I could see us doing a movie multiple times with just different characters. Oh yeah. So I don't think we've done this one. But no, we have not done this one. I've never we've not done a single. One. We've not done a single character from this one. No. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> All right, Brenda, give us a little bit of Walt to close us out today, honey. Well, we've been doing a lot of praying around here this week for all of our friends and everyone in Florida, and prayer's been in the forefront of our minds and our actions. So. I have a little quote from Walt about that. Every person has his own ideas of the act of praying for God's guidance, tolerance, and mercy to fulfill his duties and responsibilities. My own concept of prayer is not as a plea for special favors, nor as a quick palliation for wrongs knowingly committed. A prayer, it seems to me, implies a promise as well as a request at the highest level Prayer not only is a supplication for strength and guidance, but also becomes an affirmation of life and thus a reverent praise of God. Walt, Thank you, Walt. Disney. The, the man. 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 People talk all the time about what a genius he was and how amazing his life was on earth they talk about him being a patriot they talk about him being a family man but they never talk about him being a christian yeah yeah we do we do we do we know we know yeah and we love him for that we love him for everything he's given us in our lives yeah two things yeah one it wasn't cheddar, but in any other day, it would have been. Yesterday, October 9th, I think it was, or October 8th. We're recording on October 10th, people. Um, yesterday was the 62nd anniversary of Hank. Hank is the longest standing Disney Disney cast member. In ever in the company Nice 62nd year He actually started in 1958 Working summers as a Jungle Cruise skipper Fun. And then went and, and then went to be a firefighter And then came back And worked with the fire department At Disneyland um, For the protection For um, the fireworks shows On the safety team And he's nice. been with the company Non-stop for 62 years Happy work anniversary Hank Yeah I know I know And he is 92 years old Wow And he's still working And he says That The secret to his longevity Is he is always happy Always has a smile on his face And always is moving and up and about That's very important Yep. Yeah mm -hmm. So congratulations to Hank yeah. Um, and then the second thing before we close out with next week's topic is we want to wish Brenda and Butch, Aunt Brenda, mm -hmm. Uncle Butch, happy wedding anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So Thank you, you newlyweds. <gasps> I know. <laughs> 32 years of newlyweds. <laughs> yep. 32 years. Yep. So off to the next adventure. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. All right. Well, that takes us to the next adventure. Next week, we are starting a two-part series on food. 
Ooh. I love food. Mm-hmm. I love food too. Especially Disney food. We have to put on our thinking caps, people. Mm. We want to talk about Disney foods that need to return that you can no longer get. Okay. Mm. And it's a two part series because next week we're going to look at things that have been gone for over a year. That need to come back Okay And hopefully I will come up with some And have some answers um, Because maybe I bit off more than I can chew <laughs> 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 But then the next week After this one We will talk about things that have been gone For less than a year That need to come back And what got me thinking about this was Nutella waffle <laughs> You think so? Yeah. <laughs> so I think we already know one of Brenda's not for this week, but for next week <laughs> anyway. Oy, oy, oy. The mention of Nutella has me thinking about this cake we're making at work now. It is literally Nutella everything. Goodness. It's really, really yummy, but yeah. I don't want to bring one home. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of Nutella, so I love, I love, I love Nutella. Yeah, I know you two do. My my Luna loves Nutella. She wants Nutella wraps every time she comes here. I get a tortilla, wrap that Nutella all over it, roll, roll it, it up, up, and cut it up, and she loves it. <laughs> you are an awesome Mimi. I love those mm-hmm. kids. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, that's the show. Ta da! Ta da! <laughs> Until well, next then. week, I'm Mike. She is Sophie. That's Brenda. And he's Grogu, who is already thinking about some nice foods he wants to eat. Macaron. Macaron. Mm-hmm. He wants to eat frogs. Toads. No, he wants to eat macarons. Macarons. And yep. toads and frogs. Oh my. <laughs> but... I- Until next week, we hope you all have a great week. If you are in the path of storms, we hope you are safe. And if you see someone without a smile on their face, please give them one of yours. And if you need one, watch our show and hopefully you'll have one from our antics. Yes. Uh, But until next week, we will see see you on on the the road. road. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.